topic under 21 european championship yeah we said france was going to be holland we have to say sorry to that dutch team Boadou. I, I uh, that was an example of yeah France almost shooting them. themselves in the foot too but yeah incisive say, by Myron mm-hmm. we did say that Boadu and Calvin Stangs were two players from Eze Alkmaar to yep. to really see and yeah I wasn't surprised with that one I was surprised that France didn't deliver yes but I wasn't surprised Netherlands were the team to give the blow so yeah. and, and and let's be honest I mean Sven Botman and that Dutch defense, it's not exactly like they've made us all stand up and pay attention. You know, Botman, I don't think, has had a great tournament with them or great, you know, last few games with them. Uh, but ultimately, they did what they had to win, do to win. And Boadu is just that type of player. If, if he gets service, if he gets a chance, he'll put it away. Um, and you, I, I, got a, I got a question, though. Do you think yeah. Boadu would be good for Tottenham? Because... He, he's efficient. He can score goals. He's got a fantastic sense for goals. I think he might be a good player to go to Tottenham, maybe. He might, but I think they're while they're completely different players, uh, people are still in that Steven Bergvin um, <laughs> shock phase where he hasn't exactly panned out the way anyone thought he was going to. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, throw him on the short list for sure. Uh, he's certainly not a replacement uh, nobody can replace a Harry Kane if he leaves, but um, he is somebody that could deliver them incisive finishing, which is one part of what a Harry Kane offers, right? Um, True. So, yeah, uh, but I hey, I, let, let's switch over, right? Because let's talk about the Diogos. All they right? had a bit of a they had a fluke against Italy, which happens. They did. They're they young did. defenders, it happens. But Diog Kiros, Diog Light, and Diog Costa all performed in the semi-final in my opinion really good chemistry like we said as a trio not individually but as a trio they are unbelievable world-class level at a young age sure. they're fantastic zero yeah. they didn't suffer a goal against spain and yeah. Diogo light fantastic performance yeah. vitinha we can i need to get we're getting used to this now if you yeah. don't know about vitinha like put it put it in your short list if you have a phone put it on notes vitinha bowler that's nope. it fantastic player uh, easy tip you know football manager vitinha well and, and i'll tell you what it, it, vitinha if you didn't watch the game and you just looked at whatever you use to look at stats right mm-hmm. vitinha did not show up there right and that that is not the beauty of vitinha's game uh, he will show up there just give him time but uh, ultimately, the way he just, he was the architect. He was the, yeah, metronome, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he was absolutely phenomenal to watch. Uh, I but I, I think they're going to need a lot of that to beat a Germ- you know, a Germany team that is, this is their third final in a row. Um, and they are, they're hungry. They're used to winning this, right? And uh, you got an 18-year-old, Florian Wirtz, leading the way. And Baku, right? You really like Baku. He's a really I good right Baku. back. It's hard to believe that Baku is five years older than um, than Viertz, but it <laughs> uh, he he's just he's very very good. Um, so player. it's going to be interesting, you know. And Viertz, we have to remember that as uh, he's, I believe, a two thousand and three, born in two thousand and three, and he's working with a bunch of guys, playing with a bunch of guys, ninety eight, ninety nine, um, and uh, I. I really do believe that he should be at the Euros. I really feel like he should be at the Euros. Yeah. But well, now he's going to have to beat Portugal to take home the U21 Euros. That'll you, be know, you know why I think Portugal is going to win it? Because you love Portugal and you live in it? True, though. That that <laughs> That is important. But you to, you, I'm going to go back to what you said about a tight group, cohesiveness, teamwork, yep. knowing each other. I was talking about the trio. They know each other so well. Dioglait, Dioqueiroz, and Costa. Yeah. And if Portugal win the Under-21 European Championship, they'll be the first country to win the Under-17 World Champion, uh, European Championship, Under-19 European Championship, and now with the same generation, the Under-21 European Championship. Yeah. Players like Jota. And this is important too. They won. The uh the under seventeen, under nineteen, and under twenty one European Championship without Drone Felix. 
-hmm. without Jean Felix, which is the best player in this generation. This is sure. crazy. And yeah. Nunez isn't playing in the under 21s, but isn't playing in the under 21s. So this right. is not even the best. And Jean Felix obviously isn't playing in the under 21s. So Portugal have so many youngsters, which is obvious, but this team needs to win it. We want to be the best and we are going to do history. I <laughs> mark my words. I am very confident. If we don't beat Germany, Matt, the highlights on this, but I'm and very confident we will. Correct me if I'm wrong. Portugal has never won this, uh, the U21 Euros, correct? I don't think we have. I yeah. don't think we have. I'm not sure though. Don't, but, don't, but you're right, don't you're right the about the cohesion thing because that's to me, and we talked about this offline. To me, that's the only reason you leave a guy like Gonzalo Inacio out of a lineup, right? Yeah. Uh, and if you got these guys that have played together, that Diogo's fine, right? Uh, you let them play together. And mm -hmm. right now it's like, like you said, they had a shaky first game. Um, but that, that performance against Spain was very reassuring. It's just what sure, Germany sure. shows up and, and how they how they connect and how they clash is going to be really interesting. And the other guy that we, we haven't even been talking about the goal scorers for either of these teams, right? Virch scored, but for Portugal, it's Dani Mota, guy from Serie B, right? Uh, I think he's born in Luxembourg, right? But he has been nothing but a perennial scorer for the U21s. Um, and then you also have on the other side, Lucas Mecha, uh, who I believe is a Manchester City loan mm. to Anderlecht, who did nothing but score goals in Belgium this year. And in turn, he has scored throughout the group stages and throughout the um, I got something knockout to, rounds. I've got something to add quick. He yeah. is being rumored to come to Sporting. That's, I like that. I like that signing. I like that I, if they do it. For $8 million. I think he's in his last contract. Uh, at Man City and there's a partnership between Man City and Sporting so that might happen uh, part, I, part I, of I, a I, yeah no it's like the it's like the Pedro Poch deal uh, he came okay. to Sporting and I think Nunez might go to City but that's a whole other conversation I'd like to highlight the Spanish group though Marco Cucurella Gonçal Vilar uh, they, Brian Gil you got really good players here that are underrated, in my opinion. Spanish players. Yep. And, yeah, Brahim Diaz didn't have... He, he started a bit uh, really energetic, as he always does, and all over the place. But he started to, to dip a bit. And, but you got good players. What do you think? Uh, I, I think they've got a... <laughs> is it the second coming of Xavi Iniesta? And, and this is an example of of just you have the past has to lie in the past and you have to understand that you're never going to have what you used to have right so looking for that type of a core moving forward makes no sense these guys whether it's Fabian Ruiz up with the seniors or it's the Brahims of the world or the Villars who I really like a lot um mm -hmm. this is a new Spain and it's going to be a very different Spain moving forward but it is bright uh, actually a lot of these clubs I mean a lot of these clubs a lot of these countries Portugal Spain Germany all have um a phenomenal future ahead it, it'll be interesting to watch how they actually develop well I think England and Portugal will be the leading ones oh, obviously next to France the trio yeah. I think is going to be these three countries in the next five years Ooh, all right well, so, yeah. so you have Portugal beating Germany. Yes. I have Portugal beating Germany too. Ah, I love to see it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta give you Portuguese. that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that'll be a fun game, and I believe that's that's tomorrow. That's Sunday. So yeah. we'll already know we'll already know who won by the time this drops. Well, um, episode I, eight. Episode yeah. eight. Yeah, that's true. We'll have a lot. Well, we'll have way too much to talk about in episode eight. But we um, will let, talk about this. Story. Let's keep moving, 